Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I am happy to introduce you to the Sutherland Backpack by So Yours. Um, I am not usually someone who likes to sew backpacks, but this one was actually super fun to make, I will admit. It is a binding finish, um, so you end up having three raw edges that you need to bind. Do not be scared about that. I walk you through that. I also have a tutorial on how to do binding. Um, there's a couple different methods you can do the binding, whether it's with waterproof canvas or like what I do with cotton, um, double fold bias tape. Let me show you some of the features of this bag before we get into the bits and pieces of it. So you can see it's a very large backpack. Um, yeah, on the back, you have a choice that you could do the padded straps like I have done, or you could keep them just like a regular type of strap. The padded straps, I think for this side of backpack are a really good idea because this is gonna be loaded with with tons of books or whatever. This is the perfect bag for a college student or if you're traveling or any kind of student, uh, high school, uh, elementary, maybe not preschool. It's a little, it'll probably be too big for a preschooler. Um, it features two zipper um, pocket here. So this one here on one side, we have two slip pockets and you can see it goes fairly deep. And then on the other side, in the larger compartment, we have a large zipper pocket. And there you go. You can see my binding in there as well. Um, yeah, uh, materials for this bag, you can do it in all cottons. I've done it in a mixture of cotton and uh, faux leathers. Uh, interfacing in this bag, there's multiple options that you can do. You can use Decoval Light for the main uh interfacing if you wanted to. I chose to use Pellon Flex Foam. That's usually my go-to for interfacing. My front panel here is a cotton panel and I wanted it to have a little bit more of a canvasy feel. So I did back this panel with EB Fuse Heavy, which I get from Emmeline Bags. It just gives a cotton more of a canvasy type feel, which is awesome. I chose because this is such a large bag to use waterproof canvas uh, for my lining, mainly then I didn't have to worry about interfacing that because uh, it would take a lot of woven interfacing. So I opted for the waterproof canvas so I could skip the uh, woven interface woven interfacing but if you are doing your cotton lining make sure you do back that with uh, medium woven inter interfacing of some sort uh what else what else um again you need lots of binding all of my hardware except for the zippers and zipper pulls my zipper and zipper pulls are from blue cala my the rest of my hardware is from emmeline bags yeah so yeah so yours melissa has come up with another amazing pattern um trying to think of what else i need to say about this it is it did take me probably a good 12 hours of straight sewing for this bag well from cutting to end um i split it up over over two days so i did six hours each day i'm sure i would be faster as i made more this video is me making this bag for the first time so any um, hiccups I have along the way. I show you how I get over them. Um, during this tutorial, uh, a lot of this bag is rinse and repeat. So for example, when I'm doing the gussets, they all kind of go together the same way. So I show you how to do one and then get you to do the others on your own. I don't go through every step. Otherwise this video would be uber long and we didn't want that. Um, same with the binding. I show you how to bind one seam and then the other three seems you would bind the exact same way. Now I did bind this on my cylinder arm machine, which is slightly different than doing it on a flatbed. I do have a tutorial on how to do binding when I did it on my flatbed. So I will include that link down below for you if you need to see how I position the bag in order to do it on a flatbed machine. So that'll be down below. What else, what else, what else? Yeah, thank you, Melissa, for allowing me to do tutorial on this pattern and the launch video um yeah it's just awesome um some there's options also like this for this overlay piece um you can do it in cotton fabric i chose to do it in vinyl which leaves it with the raw edge here and i don't know if you can see it there i did a uh, giardini edge paint that edge there um oh my vinyl this teal vinyl is from galaxy customs this is the canuck vinyl teal 
This silver is just some random stuff. I believe it's probably a Dakota Marine vinyl that I got from Fabricville out of a, um, a clearance bin, like end of the roll type thing. And I don't have any idea where I got this Mickey Mouse fabric, so you know me. I just throw stuff in my stash and I use it for bits and pieces of projects and I always end up cutting off the selvages because I just never learn. So yeah, um, and all of my binding was uh, pre-made binding. Yeah, so what else to say about this bag? I'm not sure. Um, it's awesome. Go ahead, make it. Sew it along with me. Anyways, you can get the pattern in the link, or a link where you can get the pattern down below and any of the other little things you may need to know how to make this bag, like mini classes or what have you. But I pretty much walk you through all the straps. I, I walk you through every single piece of this so you do not have to refer to any other classes. Um, that I may have unless it's for that flatbed machine uh, binding. Anyways, without further ado, let's get to making this bag. So you are going to need medium rivets, number five zipper tape, pre-made binding, or you can make your own, or you can use waterproof canvas, two one inch D rings or rectangular rings, two one inch sliders, and six number five zipper pulls. Okay, you're gonna need your Peltex or Decaville heavy piece for stabilizing the bottom. Your front panel overlay piece, I've chosen the vinyl version and I've gone ahead and I've painted this raw edge with Giardini edge paint. Your front exterior middle panel, I've used cotton here and I've backed it with EB Fuse Heavy which has given it just a little bit more stability and more of a canvasy feel. Okay, you are going to need two exterior padded straps mirrored to one another, as well as uh, your two underside of your padded straps. I am going with just my lining fabric of a waxed canvas for the underside of my, pa of my straps. Okay, this is my gusset A piece lining and uh, exterior. Now we are going to have four different pieces for our top gussets. Okay, so this is our bottom of the bag, our gusset B piece. Make sure you label all these pieces so you don't get them mixed up as we go. Here's another top gusset piece. This is, is the wider one and it's in three pieces because we are going to be putting the handle on this one. So it has the three pieces for the exterior and the one long lining piece. So our three gusset pieces are all in, or four gusset pieces are all in different lengths. So this is our skinnier of them all, again, lining and um, vinyl pieces. I cannot read what these ones are called. My top, that's, okay, this is top gusset number one for our lining and our exterior piece. This is my slip pocket panel. For our back exterior, I have two pieces of vinyl and for my lining fabrics, I got four pieces cut and I've done this with a waterproof canvas. If you use cotton, make sure you back these with a medium woven interfacing. Your two lower straps. Your top gusset number three, lining and exterior pieces. 
Again, the pattern comes with labels for these that you could cut out. I ran out of paper, so I wasn't able to do that. A strap anchor piece, your two connector pieces, your handle overlay, your front exterior sides cut mirrored to one another, your handle piece, your interior zipper pocket lining, your exterior zipper pocket lining. Your bottom gusset piece. The lining that is. And your uh, two facings for our two zipper pockets we'll be doing. You'll also need foam or deck of a light depending what your preference is for stabilizer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my straps first. So I am going to prep my lower straps. I've drawn a middle line and down each of these. I'm using my double sided tape. You can use clips for this. We're going to take the long edges and fold them into that center line. Just like you make any handle or strap. And then fold it in on itself again with clips, holding that edge together. And then we're going to take this to the machine and we are going to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance down each side and repeat with the other strap. Okay, so that's all done. So I am going to go ahead and I am going to just Giardini edge paint the raw edges of my um, handles. All right, so the connectors we are going to do in a similar fashion, except for we are only going to fold the long edges into that center line. And then go ahead and on each of those folded sides, top stitch with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance for both. Okay, so now we have our padded strap. So we have our exterior piece. And we are going to sandwich the foam piece in between the exterior and the lining piece, um, all wrong sides together. You're going to clip these nice and even together, and then we are going to base the three layers together with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead, do that all the way around for 1 8 of an inch for both straps. Okay, so that is done. Now we are going to use the binding to bind those raw edges and finish it off. So I am using pre-made binding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this all open. We're going to do it through all the sides except for the top short straight edge. So I'm opening up my binding and I am going to clip that raw edge all the way around. Very similar to how you bind a quilt or actually how you bind a bag as well. Okay, so now I'm going to take this to the machine and go all the way around with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on both pieces. Okay, so that is done. So now what we want to do is flip this over and fold our binding over. So the, the it's double fold tape, so this is a folded edge, not a raw edge here. So it, you're going to kind of pull that up and around. I'm just going to even this out a little bit here. So pull that folded edge up and around and clip that into place, ensuring you have no raw edges showing on the binding or on our strap piece here. And continue this all the way around. Thank you. 
And then we're going to go right along this folded line here or from the other side a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance or an eighth of an inch away from the folded side, whichever you prefer. Okay, so now we are going to prepare our lower straps. So take your connector pieces, put your D-ring in, and I'm just going to use a little bit of double-sided tape on the end to hold it folded in half. Okay, and now we are going to install the slider onto our pieces, onto our uh, lower strap pieces. So put the slider in like so, and I am going to go ahead and rivet right here to hold it in place. You could also do a box stitch here if you do not want to do rivets. Okay, and then you're going to take the other short end of this strap and you are going to feed it through the D-ring. And you're going to bring the strap wrong sides together, bring it up through one end of the slider and up and over that middle bar again like so. And then repeat with the other piece. Again, bringing the strap wrong sides together through that D-ring, up through one side of the slider, over the center ring, and out the other side. Just like so. Okay, so now we are going to attach these to our padded straps. So you are going to measure up one and three quarter inches, somewhat centered. I'm just gonna take my erasable pen here and make a line where my strap is going to go. So this is a raw edge. That is why I chose to use a little Giardini edge paint here. So I'm just gonna hold this in place with clips. And then I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna do my box stitch here. So I'm kind of just eyeballing where I think I want my stitching to be to hold it in place. I think I went with about three quarters of an inch down from that top line and making a line just as a guide for when I am stitching it in place. You're going to stitch all the way around that square on both pieces. Okay, so that's done and I have also put a rivet in the middle of that square rather than doing a cross in between. So now we are going to work on our strap anchor. So you're going to take your piece and you're going to measure half an inch up from each of the long sides and draw a line. And you can use clips or double-sided tape. I am going to use double-sided tape along the, both of the long edges. Again, please know your machine's limitations before you use double-sided tape. Then you're going to fold those long edges down into that line. So we have created a quarter of an inch fold. And do the same with the other side. And then I am going to put some more double-sided tape just outside of a top stitch seam allowance on one side. And you can set that aside for now. Okay, so now we are going to measure up on our side A pieces, the narrow side. You're going to measure up one inch, or sorry, three-eighths of an inch in. And this is just going to help us line up where our placement is going to be to create our front panel. So three eighths of an inch at the, sh the shorter side on off the long side. And what we're doing here is we're going to take that line 
and we want to line it up with the curved top of our middle piece just like so so there is a little bit of an overhang right there and that is what we want this just helps you line it up perfectly so go ahead and clip all down that side we're going to do this on both sides And go ahead and go down here with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and then you're going to press that seam towards the side panel there. Again, I like to use double-sided tape to do this. Um, if you're using cottons, you can go ahead and iron it or you can finger press it, no problem. And you're going to push that seam tight so the seam is going towards that side panel. Like so. And then you are going to top stitch that seam in place. And then you're going to repeat with the other side. Okay, so that's done. We have a little bit of an overhang. We do want them to crisscross like this. Just trim off the little tails here and even up the bottom. That is front panel done. Okay, so back to our back panel. So let's go ahead and install our zipper pocket. So from the bottom edge, right bottom edge, you're going to measure it up two inches just kind of from where that corner is and then two inches in from the right hand side. Then we are going to take our overlay or our yes and we're going to put our facing and we are going to pin it right here. Now I am pinning right through these lines that we have drawn from our pattern piece. I can do that without worrying about my vinyl because we're going to be kiss um, clipping or cutting this vinyl away so it doesn't matter if I have holes in there. I'm going to go ahead and stitch all the way around that rectangle. And then just like doing any zipper pocket, you're going to go ahead and cut down the middle line, cut out your V's without cutting your stitching, just as close as you possibly can. And then you're going to turn that facing through that opening, bringing them wrong sides together on the back side. So you can go ahead and carefully press this at the machine, being careful not to hit your vinyl, uh, or you can use double-sided tape to hold it in place. Okay, so let's prepare our zipper pocket lining. So go ahead and use clips if your machine can't handle the tape. I'm using tape as I always do. I'm going to put some tape along the right side of our zipper pocket lining. And then with our zipper face up as well, we are going to stick that down or clip it down on the lining. So you would go ahead and just clip like so if you were just not using tape. Go ahead and stitch that in place and then do the same with the other side. Okay, so you want to make sure your zipper pull is to the left. And then what I like to do is just cut leaving about a quarter of an inch or so like this because the top part of this is going to be a little bit longer than the other. So this is what we want. Then you're going to fold it open like this. Go ahead and press this nice and flat. Okay, so we want our zipper pull to be closing upwards. Again, I am going to use tape. If you can't use tape, go ahead and just hold it in place like this while you sew. Okay. 
I am not very good at holding things in place. That is why I always choose to use the double-sided tape, but I do have an industrial and I have no issues with double-sided tape. So again, use double-sided tape at your own risk. Okay, so make sure you have the orientation of the zipper pull and the zipper pocket right. And go ahead and position the zipper and zipper lining within that zipper hole that we created on the exterior panel. I like to position the top first and then I pull the backing off the tape and do the bottom second. Another good double-sided tape for domestic machines is Stritz Washway Wonder Tape. Give it a test on your machine if you want if uh, you want to see if it'll work for you. Now go ahead and top stitch that in place. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to pull my threads long and I am not going to back stitch when I start this top stitch because I don't want to have that um, thickness of thread right there. I want it to look like a nice seamless top stitch. So I'm pulling my threads long and holding them back because I'm going to tie them off later. So start your stitching all the way around with an eighth of an inch top stitch. Making sure that your pocket pieces, one is going to the left and the other one is going to the right. We want them to be away from each other. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling my top thread through the back. I kind of pull on my bobbin thread and it brings a loop up and I can pull my top thread through. Okay, and then when you come to the finish, you want to make sure that you are finishing with your needle down in the starting stitch hole. I'm going to pull it, pull your threads long again. And then you can pull at that bobbin thread to pull that top thread loop through, pull the top thread to the back, and then you're going to tie off those four strands. And then I just like to take, because I'm using a nylon polyester bonded thread, I just like to melt it to make sure it won't unravel later. Okay, now to finish off our pocket, we are going to fold them down towards each other and match up our long sides. Now I'm just going to trim up my bottom here so they are the same length. Clip the three sides and then you're going to go ahead and sew those shut. Making sure you're not sewing through your exterior panel. You'll be pushing the exterior panel out of the way to sew up the zipper pocket. Okay, so you can see how I fold my exterior panel away. and then sewing with a three eighths of an inch to a half inch seam allowance all the way around that zipper pocket to close it up. And we have a functioning zipper pocket. Okay, so here we go. You can see it works good, it looks great. We have our two panels done and what we're gonna do is back those with foam. So you can see here, I went ahead and basted foam onto my front and my back panels. Now we are going to attach our overlay. So I'm gonna find the center of my bottom of my front panel 
and find the center of the top as well for later. You're going to take your, I'm going to use some double sided tape outside of the seam allowances so we can hold this in place well. So on a domestic, this would be fine with the double sided tape because it's not in any point where you're going to be sewing through it. And then you are going to stick this overlay on nice and centered onto our front panel like so. So eyeball it, make sure it all goes well. I'm actually going to cut a little notch in my center bottom. That'll help me line it up a little bit better and place it the way you want it to be. I'm making sure my V is nice and centered. I want, this is a very focal part of this bag. So you want it to be as centered as you can possibly make it. Okay, and I'm going to use some clips on the outside as well just to help make sure it doesn't shift. Okay, you're going to go ahead baste around the outside and top stitch down that V part. I also went ahead and added my nameplate and then backed it with some duct tape just to make sure the prongs don't poke through anything. All right, so you want to find the centers of your top and bottom of your exterior back piece. And then we're going to take our ruler and we are going to measure five inches down from the top center. And I'm going to draw a line and this is going to be where I attach my um, strap anchor. So the part where we put the double sided tape outside of the seam allowances on the bottom, we want to stick that along that line. And we're going to go ahead and top stitch that with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to cut away the excess on the sides. Okay, and we're going to measure in from where that strap anchor ends. Let's so right that top corner there. You want to make sure it's nice and even. And you are going to measure in one and a half inches and make a mark. And we want to make sure that the curves are going towards the exterior of the bag like so. When they are right sides down, I'm going to put a little bit of tape along the top here. And then we are going to put these right sides together like so and you're going to press that strap as close as you possibly can to the seam where we um, so a uh, top stitch that anchor and I've just drawn some lines here uh, for guidance for sewing them in place. Okay so now that those are sewn in place I'm going to go ahead and use some more double sided tape outside of a 1 8 of an inch um, top stitch and then stick this down on top like so and go ahead top stitch across here and baste the two short sides. So I also want to secure these with rivets. I'm going to put three rivets. I'm just going to eyeball where I'm going to place them. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my rivets through there. As well as back them with scraps of Decaville Heavy for extra stability. Okay, so now it is time to do our strap anchors. So kind of from the pointy side here, we're measuring up an inch off that straight edge before it curves. And I'm making a mark on both sides. And then we are going to take our connector and you're going to kind of
kind of put the bottom corner right up at that line and it's going to angle out like so. And same with the opposite side. So the bottom corner kind of goes right where that line is, matching up that seam allowance and then angling it out. Go ahead and baste that in place. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim off that ex excess of the connectors. And we have our two panels done. Okay, so now let's work on our lining. So take two of your lining pieces and put them wrong sides together like so. And then you are going to go ahead and baste these with the 1 8 of a seam allowance together. So this is going to be our middle lining piece of our backpack in between the two zipper portions. Okay, so let's do our slip pocket. Now take your slip pocket piece and you are going to fold it in half, matching up the two short sides. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave an opening about this big here. I like to write open just so I don't forget. That is our turning hole for the slip pocket. Okay, and you're gonna go down here, and back stitch here, jump over, back stitch, and all the way back up with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So now I'm going to trim up those seams to about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch-ish. I am not trimming the bottom seams. I like to cut a little bit on an angle right where my corners are. I find that it makes it a little bit more crisp of a corner that way, just to reduce some of the bulk. And then go ahead and turn it right side out through that turning hole. Take a chopstick or a pen or some sort of pokey tool like I have here and point out those corners. Okay, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine, give this a good press, also pressing in my raw edges with about 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance here. And then I'm gonna take it and top stitch with the 1 eighth of an inch seam allowance along that folded edge. Okay, so that's all done. Now I'm going to fold this in half just to kind of mark the center of my pocket. I'm going to fold my uh, back or my front lining piece in half. So this is one of the single lining pieces. We have the one that we had basted already set aside. So this is my front lining piece. I am adding just a little bit of double sided tape to hold this in place. I'm measuring three inches up center from the bottom and lining up my creases. Go ahead and top stitch this in place. This will also up, up the center and down the center again to create two pockets and that'll also close up our center or our opening in the bottom. As you can see here, we have two pockets. They're quite long pockets. I like to add rivets just to help with some of the stress points. Okay, so on our final lining piece, we are going to install our um, other zipper pocket. So you are gonna measure five inches down from the top and do this exactly like we did with the exterior. The exterior zipper pocket. Okay, so we have all three of our lining panels done, the one with the slip pocket, the one with the zipper pocket, and the one with the two pieces that are wrong sides together. Now let's work on our gussets. Again, use clips if you can't use tape. So we're taking our top gusset one, this is the skinny, skinny gusset. I am going to show you one and then you can go ahead and do the others. So on my lining piece, right sides up, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape or you can use clips.
And I'm going to do the same on the right side of the exterior piece along one of the long edges. And you're going to put the zipper tape on this right side up of the lining piece. So the lining piece is right side up and the zipper tape is right side up. And then you're going to go ahead with the exterior piece and you're going to put it right sides together with the zipper piece, sandwiching the zipper in between the lining and the exterior pieces. Go ahead and use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and do the exact same thing with the other top gusset piece, the shorter ones. Okay, so that is done. And then you want to uh, press the lining pieces and the exterior pieces away from the zipper tape. You can go ahead and finger press this if you want. Again, I like to use my double-sided tape as a um, kind of to baste it so I know it's nice and tight. Again, if your machine cannot handle double-sided tape, do not use the double-sided tape. <laughs> But if it can, it is an amazing tool. It just helps things so much. And do the same with the lining. So you're bringing your lining piece and your exterior piece as tight away from that zipper as you can, bringing those pieces wrong size together. Go ahead and top stitch along here with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and baste the other three sides. Do the same with the other uh, narrow gusset piece. You will notice that our gusset pieces are all three different widths. We are working with the two shorter width gusset pieces right now. And I am just basting these uh, other edges together just to make sure that they're all staying in place when we go to put our gussets together. Just like so. And the same with the other one that we're working on at the same time. Okay, so those two are done. So we got a narrower one and we have a wider one. We want to keep the narrowest one out. And we're going to take our gusset number two piece. 
and we are going to attach it to the other side of those gusset pieces exact same fashion so we have one that has like a narrow and a wider piece and then the other one with just the one side on it for now so now let's work on our handle so we're going to measure three inches up along and again create exactly how we do our regular straps going to fold the long sides into each other fold it in half and we are going to do two lines of decorative top stitching our regular 1 8th of an inch down both long sides and then again with a quarter of an inch down each side so we will have four decorative top stitch lines now for our handle overlay where our two short piece sides of this are, we're going to measure up half an inch. Use some double-sided tape. And fold into that, to where that line is. So again, we are folding in just like we did with the handle anchors, that quarter of an inch. Okay, and go ahead and top stitch along there so you can see there's my strap and there's my handle overlay. Now from the short sides of our strap, I'm going to measure in two and a half inches. And this is just going to give us an idea where we're placing our handle overlay. So this is the wrong way. This is the right way because it fits in between those lines. And then you're going to flip this over and you are going to fold those overlay pieces like this and they should overlap again these have raw edges so you want to make sure you're using a vinyl piece if you're doing it the way I'm doing it so I'm going to use a piece of double-sided tape to hold that in place on the back side and then on the front side I'm going to find my center which is three quarters of an inch use my chalk to draw a center line and then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch through there there we go, and we have caught both sides of those raw edges, so we are good. Okay, so of our gusset number four pieces, you want to take the shorter piece. We want to find the centers of the short sides of this. And then I'm just going to kind of mark with my chalk or my erasable pen here three quarters of an inch here so I know the center of my strap so these are one and a half inch straps and then you're going to take our handle right side up and center it on with that mark like so do the same on the other side now I accidentally go sew these with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You only need to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance right now. Okay, so now that that is done, we are going to take our uh, gusset number four side pieces, match up those short edges. And we are going to go now and sew this with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance right through here. Do the same with the other side. And then once these are opened up, we will top stitch them as well. So three eighths of an inch through the handle and the two gusset pieces. Like so, and then we are going to press that seam towards the side and top stitch with a 1 8th of an inch seam allowance.
and top stitch like we did with the first side. All right, so that is another one of our top gusset pieces. I said there are lots of top gusset pieces. So now with the gusset piece where we only have the one side done, we are gonna take our handle, just like we did with the other gusset pieces, and do the lining and that handle gusset piece, sandwiching that zipper tape in between, just like we did with the other gusset pieces. Okay, so that has this one done here. Put that aside for now. Now let's look on our bottom pieces. So what you wanna do is we want to apply our bottom stabilizer. I am using Peltex here. So in our gusset B, our bottom piece, I am finding my centers along the, the long edges and doing the same with my Peltex piece. This just helps me see where center is and I'm gonna go ahead and fuse this on. And then I am going to back this whole piece with foam just like we did with the other main panels. Okay, so we have foam in there. My Peltex is underneath the foam. Okay, so we're taking that first gusset piece that we had done. And I do not remember what this is labeled, but it is another gusset piece. And this is to do our bottom gusset. So I guess this is our, our narrower bottom gusset. So what we want to do is we want to place the exteriors right sides together and the linings right sides together like this, sandwiching that gusset piece. Go ahead and sew those with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So what this is doing is for our zipper pocket, our two zippers on the backpack, we have the narrower zipper, uh, zipper enclosure and then we have the wider zipper enclosure. So right now we are working on the narrower one. So once you've done that then you want to turn those pieces wrong sides together and top stitch that place towards the bottom narrow gusset piece. Then we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other side of this. So you're going to bring your exterior pieces right sides together like so. I'm just trimming up my zipper because it's not very even here. We want it to be a nice straight line. Okay, so our exterior pieces right sides together and then you're going to take your lining piece of your narrow bottom gusset and bring it right sides together with our zipper panel. So we're kind of forming two loops in a way. Like that. Make sure it's not twisted and go ahead and sew that seam with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Then turn those pieces wrong sides together and you can kind of go ahead and turn it all right side out like this and top stitch with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then with those two narrow gusset pieces, we want to kind of make it so they are attached. So I am going to baste them together down each of those long sides. So we have created one huge circle gusset piece. Again, I know that I am saying uh, what the pieces are called incorrectly. Uh, make sure that you have them labeled and um, follow the pattern to make sure you're using the correct pieces as you're putting this together. Okay, and then go ahead and do the other side.
just like so. Okay, so you can see how we have our perfect circle, everything is attached, we're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna take our wider bottom gusset piece and then our, ha our handled top gusset piece and we are going to repeat the exact same thing over again. So our exterior's right sides together and our lining's right side together, sandwiching that zipper panel and rinse and repeat with exactly what we did with our narrow gusset pieces, just like this one. Okay, so now we have two, they are done. We want to keep out the narrower one for now. And we want to find our top and bottom centers. So the way I'm doing this is I'm lining up that seam where our bottom gusset and our top gussets ended up meeting. And then it's just doing a small snip on the top for my center and same for the bottom and do the same for the opposite side. Okay, so now we are gonna take the lining piece that we had put our lining pieces wrong size together and basted them. We want to line this up with the lining side of our gusset piece. So match up your centers and hold this together with clips. So again, you wanna make sure that your um, exterior gusset is right side out like this and then attaching this on the lining side of that gusset. I find it best to match the top centers and the bottom centers first and then you can start working around the curves. And doing the zipper sometimes helps just make it so you can maneuver it a little easier. Now when you get down to the bottom left and right corners, you're going to notice that the gusset doesn't look like it fits. Um, that's because we're taking something straight and we're trying to make it round. So you're going to go ahead and make, I think I made like 18 little snips here um, just to help be able to spread the gusset fabric out so it can work its way around that curve. So yes, 15 to 20 little snips here will help you do that. As you can see, now it fits because we can spread that gusset piece fabric out. Use lots of clips to hold this corner. Um, some do like to use staples. I don't because I hate pulling them out later. Or um, some also like to hand baste it. I'm just going to go with it here. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now this binding process I am doing on my cylinder arm. So that's what you're going to see here. If you need to see how I position the bags on a flatbed, I do have a binding class, which I did on my flatbed machine. I will link that down in the description below. I couldn't show this on my uh, flatbed because my flatbed is currently broken um, and is being repaired. So I am only using my cylinder machine, but honestly I bought my cylinder machine specifically for doing binding and doing top stitching. So. This just makes things so much easier. But yes, definitely check out my class if you want to see how I position the bag to do this on a flatbed machine. Ran out of bobbin thread? Make sure you check your bobbin thread before you start this.
You can tell I clip it really good. You do not want it to shift. Okay, so I've gone all the way around here. I have actually changed my thread to match my lining because it may show. Now you can see on one side uh, we have a nice enclosed edge and then on the other side we have a raw edge. So now we're going to take our handle piece, our handle gusset piece. We are going to find our centers just like we did with the other gusset piece. Okay, and we are going to turn this wrong sides out. Okay, and we are going to take the narrower side of the handle gusset piece. We're going to line up our top centers and we are going to clip this in place. Now you're going to see, we are actually going to be sewing over the same seam that we just did. So you are attaching it on the same side as the uh, gusset piece that we just did. And you're gonna go ahead and pin it all the way around. So you wanna make sure you're lining up these side seams here so we are have a nice fluid line. So yes, what I'm trying to say is that gusset piece we just sewn on the narrower ones, we are sewing along that same seam. This is where we're connecting the two zipper um, compartments of the backpack. So if you are on the other side that's not attached to anything, you are on the wrong side. So go ahead, clip that all the way around. And now we are gonna go around here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And it looks exactly like it did when we did it before. So I'm not showing that at the machine. So now you can see on one side, we have a beautifully enclosed seam. And then on this opposite side, we have a seam that we are going to need to bind. What I wanna do is just kind of poke this out to make sure that everything was caught and that our seam is looking really good. So I'm just gonna take a quick peek before I bind that and we are good. Turn it wrong side out again, and then we are going to bind this. I am only going to show you how to bind the one seam. There are three seams in all that we will come across, but I will walk you through the binding of this first seam. Okay, so I'm using cotton ready-made binding. Okay, so just like we did when we did our padded straps, we are going to take our double fold binding and we are gonna lay it out flat like so. But we also want to enclose the raw edge of the short end of our binding. So you're gonna fold it in half like, or fold it down like this about an inch or so, and then go ahead and use clips and match up that raw edge. Now, another option that you can do for the binding is you could use a uh, waterproof canvas where you don't need to worry about the double fold and you can do it all in one step. Melissa, who is the designer and owner of Sew Yours, um, I believe used waterproof canvas uh, binding in her tutorial. So I will send, I will make sure I put a link to her tutorial in the description below once I have it. All right, so I've gone around and I've clipped it almost all the way around. Now, once you come to the end, you're going to want to overlap the binding. So you're gonna go just past where our binding started. And what we're doing here is it'll enclose the other uh, raw edge of our binding once we cut it off. So have it overlap about an inch or so, inch-ish, and then cut your binding. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and go around all the way around here with approximately a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. What I like to do is 
when you have pre-folded binding, it has the fold lines in there. I usually end up following that first fold line, which is just over a quarter of an inch. And again, if you want to see the positioning of a bag doing this on a flatbed machine, make sure you take a uh, check out my uh, class, which I have below on binding um, when I did the tutorial on my flatbed machine. So make sure you use a lot of clips. Make sure everything is staying in place. You don't want it to shift. You want to make sure that you are catching everything. Corners are the hardest part because the binding likes to shift. If your binding feels like it's shifting at all, sometimes the stiletto helps to hold it in place as you sew. I also have my zipper foot on. I always use my zipper foot when I'm doing binding. I find it's just a little bit easier to help feed it through. And then backstitch when you get to the beginning again. Okay, so now uh, you want to make sure everything was caught. So I double check. And then once that looks good, we are going to fold our double fold over. So I like to start at the bottom to make sure that where we have our overlap, that we have them nice and overlapping evenly. So we have no raw edges showing. And then I work my way around the rest of the bag. Now again, I have changed my thread to match my lining and my uh, binding just because sometimes those stitches do show. And if it's the same color, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy because nobody will ever see it. Now what's the binding, yes, you can see it a little bit in the bag, but really it's caught in the seams. So if it is not utmost perfection and straight lines it's never going to be noticed if you're using the same color thread that is so go ahead and you clip that all the way around and then we're going to go right along that that fold there and sew it um, the folded side down which is approximately 3 8 of an inch seam allowance so it's almost like top stitching along that fold at an eighth of an inch seam allowance or three eighths of an inch in from the other side. So I am using my stiletto as it just helps me keep it in place, especially around those corners.
So again, this is the only binding that I will show you here. I will show you how to attach the um, other two sides, but then when it comes to binding them on, you will do this exact same process. Binding is nothing to be scared of. You just take it nice and slow. I love the shape binding gives a bag, especially a backpack or a bowler bag. It just, it just gives a really great structure. And then you don't have the pain of having to turn it through that uh, zipper pocket or what have you, especially when it's a large bag like this. Okay, so I'm just going to go double check the seam, make sure I have no puckers and that everything looks okay. And it does. Okay, so now what we want to do now, oh, once we double check along here, we look good. Okay, so this is going to be a little tough to explain, so hopefully my visual will help. Oh, first we got to attach our front panel and our lining front panel together, wrong sides together. I almost forgot about this part. So the front panel, I chose the, the zipper, or not the zipper pockets, the slip pockets to be the back of my uh, front panel and my zipper pocket to be the back of my back panel. So these go wrong sides together like so and base them around. Okay, so there we go. So now we can attach these to the rest of the bag. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we are working with the shorter, the narrower gusset piece, because that's the front of the bag. So what we wanna do is we wanna kind of take the back of the bag or the back, the longer gusset, and we're kind of stuffing it into the center like this to bring the shorter gusset pieces wrong size out. This is very hard to explain so I'm hoping that the visual here will show it and then we are going to put it right size together like so and match up that narrower gusset piece with the front panel. So again you're tucking the wider gusset pieces inside the bag because we will deal with those later and just matching up these narrower parts. So when you do sew this together, you want to make sure that you aren't catching the parts that we have stuffed into the bag. We just want to make sure we're count are getting the narrow gusset pieces and the front panel together. Okay, so go ahead and do the binding and everything the exact same way that we did with that first gusset piece. This one here. Do the exact same process. Okay, so we have that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pull it out, kind of just double check it to make sure everything looks good. And then we are going to do just the opposite that we did with that. And we're gonna stuff the front panel kind of inside the bag like this to expose the raw edge of the wider gusset pieces. At the same time as checking to make sure everything was caught and I don't have any nips or tucks. So now it kind of looks like this squished mess. <laughs> now take your back piece, put it right sides together, and we are going to rinse and repeat and do the exact same attaching and binding process with this. This one is a lot easier because it's wider. I believe in the pattern, um, the first two binding edges that I did, they do them opposite. You can definitely do them opposite if you want to. It doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so we have all three edges bound and now we can go ahead and turn this right side out. Now, as you're doing this, you want to kind of push the bindings out to get a nice crisp edge. Pressing those seams nice like I am doing here. 
This bag turns super easy. And you see how the binding just gives it really nice structure and a very, very nice look. So take your time to make sure all your seams are pressed out nice. Just kind of squeezing them like this. You do up your zippers, they all work great. And she is pretty much done, guys. How, what do you think? She is done. All right, that's it, that's all, all folks. See, it really wasn't that hard of a bag to make. It is large, but she is beautiful. Anyways, I hope I can see all of your versions of this bag. Make sure you post it on my Facebook uh, Bag Makers group. All that information is down below in the description. If you haven't already, like, and subs like this video, subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to also do further support to my channel, you can buy me a coffee. That is down in the link below. That is completely optional. But if you would like to, that would be wonderful as well. Anyways, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye!